last week it was about financial freedom for the past. What a great lesson that was. And in fact, I think Sister Sharon was here when the lesson was discussed. Uh, but she uh, she viewed it in uh, uh, in YouTube. Naka record kasi yung lesson and nagcomment pa rin sa doon that means pinaking din niya ulit. And you will really learn so much. You will really learn so much regarding finances. You remember at the start of the lesson we we mentioned that the Lord Jesus Christ is Paul. One, one, this is one of the subjects that he discussed a lot. Six more times compared to other uh, subjects in the Bible. And uh, the subject of money and the subject of hell. And I wonder how many Christians honor the Lord with their substance. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, honor the Lord with thy substance. See, we do not only honor the Lord with our lives. We should. Our goal be. But we also honor the Lord with our substance. And uh, we are trying to give you lessons from the Word of God. How to be free from our debt. Last week we discussed two words that was very important. One is the word what? One is the word what? Sanction. Okay. Sanction. And the other is the word what? Surplus. Those have been two words. If you remember those things. One is a sanction. Uh, the bleeding has to stop. Okay, you have to arrest the bleeding. So, if you forgot the lesson, I hope you will review that. And if there's one thing I remember particularly about sanction, borrowing has to stop. Okay, borrowing has to stop. You should arrest the bleeding. If you want to be free uh, financially, if you want to own a little bit of substance, that's number one. Okay. As much as possible, uh, uh, quit borrowing. And the uh, second is surplus. You save some, uh, you you find an extra job, but it should not be to the expense of family and uh, your services to the Lord. And when you save up some extra, you use that to pay for your debt. And if you will do this, this is a this is a this is a uh, long process. But you can pay all of your debt in seven years' time. If you will study sooner, you start. Uh, you can you can be free soon. Uh, I'm afraid that many Christians will go to heaven with a debt on earth. Okay? Ba pumunta tayo sa langit na napakarami nating naiwan na utang dito, ha? Okay. That's one that's one blessing of being a Christian. Amen. Are you saved? Amen. Because when you are saved and the rapture takes place, you're okay. You're you're free. Okay. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is coming soon? Brother Ferguson? Okay, you, you you can do that, okay? You can apply the principle. Oh, well, today, the lesson today is financial freedom for the present. And we will be talking about the budget. And uh, Brother Jimmy, you come. I want him to teach the lesson because he's a good teacher. And uh, his testimony is, uh, is great. And I want the flow of the lesson to be in continuity, consistency of the lesson. So, Brother Jimmy, uh, let's uh, prepare our hearts and minds and listen to the lesson today. Good morning, everyone. I'm back. Uh, pardon me because I have colds and cats, so probably I won't be talking too much, so that we'll finish early. Uh, this people with this design for me. So. If you are speaking here, you bring your own. <laughs> As Pastor mentioned, we are uh, in a series of uh, lessons about financial freedom. And this is already the uh, sixth lesson. Financial freedom for the present. Uh, may I request everybody to uh, stand up that has uh, open in a word of prayer. Let us pray, O oh Father in heaven, O oh Lord, we thank you for uh, bringing us together again. Thank you for this opportunity that we are able to study a lesson about financial freedom, O oh Lord. Uh, dear Holy Spirit, you open our hearts, our minds, so that we'll be able to learn uh, something today that we'll be able to apply in our lives, O oh Lord. We uh, also ask for safety for those who are still on their way and guide us as we study your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, once, uh, once again, good morning, everybody. As Pastor John mentioned, 
Last week we studied about two things that is sanctions and surplus. The second point was surplus. But how do we gain the surplus? The lesson for today has something to do with how we can have surplus from our income. Um, all throughout the Bible, God uh, gives us important principles for life that includes how to handle money and finances. If you will look at the Bible, Proverbs chapter 21, verse 5, it says, The thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteousness, but everyone that is hasty only to want. The verse is telling us that diligence could lead or will lead us to prosperity or profit, and then haste would lead us to poverty. That's why it's very important for us to learn and remember that when you spend, you have to spend it wisely. And it's not uh, something that you just do, you know, because your mind is telling you to. And the best way for everyone to have financial freedom is to use a budget. Probably everybody has heard this word, budget. It is simple, yet sound method of financial management which requires number one, planning, number two, communication, and number three, discipline. Uh, actually, yeah, it's easy to plan. You know, before you receive your salary, you always plan. I, I, uh, once I receive my salary, I'll pay my rent. I set aside something for my clothes. I set, I'll set aside something for my food. I set aside something for my family. I set aside something for uh, my tithes and offerings. It's easy to plan. Do you agree? Very easy. <clears throat> it's also very easy to communicate. Sometimes if you want to buy something, we tell our friends, hey, tomorrow I'll be buying the new uh, S6 Edge. Or I'll buy the new iPhone Plus. So it's easy to communicate. But the most difficult thing to do is creating this attitude of discipline. It's very difficult. Um, uh, let's open our Bible in Proverbs 27 verses 23 to 27. Let's read, read all the verses together and learn something from it. Proverbs 27 verses 23 to 27. Tell me when you're there. Proverbs chapter 27, 23 to 27. It says, Be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks, and look well to thy herds. For riches are not forever, and doth the crown endure to every generation. The hay appeareth, and the tender grass showeth itself, and herbs of the mountains are gathered. The lambs are for thy clothing, and the goats are the price of the field. And thou shalt have goat's milk enough for thy food, for the food of thy household, and for the maintenance for thy maidens. So the verse is telling us, especially in verse 23, that the instruction given by the Lord is that we have to know the state of and look well to the management of our income. This is a command from the Lord. For us, to know the state of our flock or our income and to be able to manage it. In verse 27 it says, this is the promise, that there will be enough for our own needs, our household, and those who depend on us. So for us to be able to have enough, it is important for us to know the state of our income and to be able to manage it. <clears throat> That's the only time we'll be able to reap the promise of God that we will have enough for us, for our household, and for all those who depend on us. A budget is nothing more than a plan for saving and spending money. It includes where the money will come from and how much to expect. So, kailangan po natin alam, alam po natin kung magkano yung ating uh, 
uh, income or salary o yung ina-expect nating darating na pera and how much of this expense uh, or how much of this money will be spent will be spent for our expenses a good budget takes care of all regular and important bills like for example rent mortgage utilities food gasoline insurance these are very important and essentials and allow for the unexpected and occasional expenses because most of us we just spend for those necessities and don't save for unexpected expenses that's why when unexpected expense comes we don't know where to get the money it is very important for us to have a budget that's why we're studying this today so that we'll be able to manage our income so much so that we are able to save some for unexpected expenses or occasional expenses to live without a budget often leads up uh, leads to short-sighted decisions if i have money right now i can spend it right now do you agree if i have money i can spend it so if i want to buy a new clothes a new clothes or a new clothing or new clothes and i have money i can easily buy it amen or you can easily buy it and <clears throat> why bother about the rent if the rent is due two weeks from now some of us is, some of us are like that i have money now i want a new pair of pants or i want a new pair of shoes a new pair of shoes and i have the money i'll spend it spend it i'll spend on it now and then think about the rent when it becomes due this is this is normal for all of us unless we are one of those rare individuals who earns more than what what we spend unless because there are only selected probably if you are a Henry C you don't have to think about tomorrow because we have a lot of money to spend but we are not like him if that's the case we will need to develop a plan for where our money goes and where otherwise it will slip out of our hands napakarami po natin kinikitang pera pero hindi po natin nakikita kadalasan yung pera natin kasi dumadaan lang sa kamay natin ito po ang sitwasyon ng napakaraming mga overseas contract workers this is the situation of uh, most contract workers we earn much and we also spend much <clears throat> sometimes it will disappear in small amounts that add up so quickly like for example you go out you saw starbucks you buy coffee you go out you saw this you buy it Amen. Okay, sometimes you feel thirsty instead of going home you, you go and buy something from the store and then if you add up this small small spendings it will add up to huge amounts supermarkets convenience stores fast food chains and so forth are very successful in squeezing money out of our pockets do you agree they are very successful in squeezing money from our pockets yes <laughs> Okay. They are very successful, especially if we have no budget or no plan. Do you agree? If you don't have any plan about your money, you just spend it. Yeah, ten years lang yan siya, ten years. Oh, five years lang yan siya, five years. Before you know it, you spend all your money already. <coughs> okay. It takes a plan to make our funds stretch to meet all our needs. So it's really needed to have, to have a plan so that we can stretch our income to meet all our needs. This is where a Christian budget becomes a useful tool to receive God's blessing 
as wise financial stewards. We have to remember always that what we have is just, uh, no, what we have is a property of God and we're just stewards. We are just managers. Through proper planning, it is possible to have a balanced budget and to have a reserve for unplanned expenses. So why do we need a budget? The introduction is so uh, long, but the lesson is short. A budget will force us to pay attention to our money and see new opportunities. Because if you have excess funds, then you can see new opportunities. A budget will encourage us and our spouse to be in the same page. Do you agree? If you have a budget, you discuss it with your wife or your spouse, then you will be on the same page. And then a budget will, this is very important, a budget will dramatically lower our stress levels. Do you agree? If you have a, because sometimes you don't have money, we're all stressed out. But if we have a budget, this will manage our stress. I guarantee you, it will, it will manage our stress. Four points for today. Four things that the Lord wants us to learn today. Number one, planning a budget. There are three questions to answer in order to properly plan a budget. Three questions. Where am I right now? What does it mean? How much is my income? Or what is my income? What are my basic needs? What are my current commitments? Or how much do I owe? How much is my loan in the bank? Or how much do I owe people? Number two, where do I need to go? What is my goal? What is my aim? Am I working towards becoming debt free? Are there any unusual needs coming up? Do I need to save for my children's college education? Do I need to save up for future needs? These are the questions that we should always ask ourselves. Do I have a house when I retire? So you have to set goals for yourselves. Are there unusual needs coming up? What special savings goals am I trying to reach? That's the second question. And the third, how do I get there? How do I get there? Proverbs 16.3 says, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Proverbs at the first admonishes us to commit our works or our plan unto the Lord so that our thoughts shall be established. Because if we commit, if we do not commit our plan to the Lord, there will come a time that you will change your mind. Right. You know, sometimes you will say, I, I'll save for my college edu uh, children's uh, educational fund. And after a month, there's a need that is coming up, you will take that money and spend it. Why? Because you have not, you have not committed your plan unto the Lord. It is very important for us, if we plan something, we should commit it unto the Lord. So that we are established on that plan. God will seal that. God will uh, uh, impress in our hearts that plan so that we can adhere unto it. Second point, prioritizing a budget. Planning and prioritizing a budget should be seen as a matter of wise stewardship. Therefore, it is a spiritual exercise. So, budget planning is a spiritual exercise more than arithmetical, arithmetical. How do you pronounce that? Arithmetical. Um, it's not about numbers. It's not, it's, it is not all about numbers but it is a spiritual exercise. Okay, learn how to prioritize. Who is your priority or what is your priority? According to our lesson, letter A, the Lord should be our priority. The Lord must be first. Amen. It says in Proverbs 3, 9 to 10, Honor the Lord with thy substance 
and with the first fruits of all, yeah, first fruit of the uh, thy increase, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. So, Christian budget, one must not forget to give God what belongs to Him. Letter B, taxes must be paid. Uh, we are blessed because here in, in Qatar we don't pay income taxes. But if you are working in the Philippines, you have to pay for your taxes. It says in uh, Romans chapter 13, verse 6 to 7, For this cause pay you tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon the very thing. Render therefore to all their Jews, tribute to whom tribute, uh, sorry, uh, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. So if we are, uh, if we ought to pay our taxes, we have to pay it. If you have properties in the Philippines, you have to pay your real estate taxes. <clears throat> and if you are working there, you have to pay your income taxes. Number three, or letter C, debts must be paid. Psalms 37, 21. It says, The wicked borroweth and pay it not again. But righteousness showeth mercy and giveth <coughs> so, it says if you borrow, you have to pay back. Amen? Amen. Amen. And in Romans 13, 8, it says, Owe no man anything. So, if you still owe something to your brother or to anybody, you have to pay it. That's the third. Fourth, the family must be provided for. We don't take off we don't take care of our personal needs first. We should tend for our family first. Amen. Sometimes, you know, I want this gadget, I spend all my money on this gadget and forget about my family. Even if my, the tuition fee of my son is already coming, oh, I, I still want this gadget, I'll buy it. I'll just, uh, I'll just take care of the, of the need when it comes. We should always, always put our family first before our personal needs. Letter E. Oh, let's, let's read 1 Timothy 5.8. 1 Timothy 5.8 says, But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith, and is worse than an infidel. So if you are not able to support your family, you're like an infidel. It's like you don't have faith in God. You know, it's like not having faith in God. So it's very important for us to put our family first and not our personal needs and wants. And letter E, the future must be saved in Proverbs 6, uh, verse 6 to 8. This is actually the, the parable about, is it called parable, or the story about the ants. You know, during summer, the ants will, will collect a lot of food so that during a uh, rainy season, they have food stored for them. This is an example given by Lord, the Lord for us to um, uh, admonish and, and uh, uh, what we call this, to follow. That we should also set aside something for our future. So that's prior, prioritizing the budget. Third point, the Lord wants to teach us, producing a budget. This is actually a tedious exercise. Consider the following steps according to our handouts. Step one, determine your gross income. So if your gross income, say for example, is 4,000 riyals monthly, so that is your baseline. So if you're receiving 20,000, that is your baseline. If you have apartments in the Philippines that you are renting out, you add that to your gross income. Or if you have other income like uh, you have a sideline or you're rendering overtime. So you, you add this to your gross income. And then right after that, step two, you have to subtract from your gross monthly income what is due for the Lord. Say for example, if you have 4,000 riyals, 10% goes to your tithe, so 4,000 less 400, 
So you'll have 3,600 at your disposal. Okay? That's clear? <clears throat> the remaining amount is your net spendable income. This is the object of your budget. Step three, you have to list all your expenses. List all your ex expenses. In order to understand the budget, you must know exactly what you are spending with precision, very specific. List every expenditure you know, even the smallest ones. Brother Ronald, can you just flash the sample budget that I prepared? Okay. List every expenditure you know or can possibly anticipate. If possible, study your previous spending or spending habits and use them as a starting guide. So you can see this is a sample budget. This is your gross income. You add your additional income if you have. And then this is your actual monthly income. Say for example, you didn't have extra income for this month, so you don't have extra income here. So your gross is 4,000. And then you list all your expenses down on the road. Priority is the Lord. So you set aside your tithes, your offering, your faith promise. Next. And then your family support. If you're sending money back home. Okay? For education, for food, house expenses, others. And then your housing here. If you are renting, if you have a home, electricity and water, and then if you're paying people. Next. Transportation. If you have vehicle payment, if you have loaned uh, vehicle, or you are taking the bus or taxi, you're paying for insurance, you're paying for fuel, you're paying for maintenance, and others. Next. For food, groceries, and dining out. I think singles would have a lot of money for here. Because I can see every Friday, Friday they're uh, dining out. Okay, next. Personal care. Medical, hair, nails for uh, ladies, makeup, clothing, shoes, dry cleaning, others. Okay, next. If you have loans, personal loans, credit cards, others. Taxes, if you are paying taxes, real estate taxes, income tax. You can also include car registration. Next. And then savings or investment. Your retirement fund, investment fund, college fund, or whatever fund that is, and then your gifts and donation. Okay? This is just a sample. What we're seeing here is that you have to anticipate all your expenses and write it down. Amen. You really have to write it down. Okay. After listing all your expenses, it is now time to start prioritizing our expenses. <clears throat> look at your list so you made a list all the expenses you have to look at it and then you have to identify the most important of all of that list and put number one on it okay family support is one food is one transportation is one so these are very essentials one and then you put number two for those non-essentials Okay? Very important that you list everything, even the smallest expense like snacks in the office or tips in the restaurants. So you have to put everything in writing. Okay? Some expenses we have already mentioned. Now, after listing all those expenses, it's time to decide how much you will put in each and every expense. Okay, just like, like what I did here. I put some amount in some and nothing on some. So you have to put an amount. Okay, once you have your prioritized list of expenses, we, we are now ready to figure out how much you, you should spend in each. Okay, think about your income. How much are you bringing into your household every month? If you don't consider yourself a high income earner, perhaps you need 
this is very important. You need to limit your budget on non-essentials. Okay? You have to know your budget and limit your budget on non-essentials. So you know yourself what are the non-essentials. I don't have to elaborate on that. Okay? Amen. Sample. Okay. Where am I? Spend a greater percentage of your income on essentials. What you know how much once you know how much money you're going to need to allocate every month into your budgeting categories. These are the budgeting categories. Add them up. Add. Okay? And then you compare the total with your actual income. Is that clear? Add it up. And then you compare to your actual income. If your budget is more than your income, what do we do? Cut. Why? Because borrowing should not be an option. Amen? Because all of us would list a lot of things. We want this, we want that, we want to do this, we want to do that. And then, when we look at our income, we don't have enough money. What do we do? We borrow. Okay? This is very important. Borrowing is not an option. It is not good stewardship. It is not pleasing to the Lord, especially if we are financing non-essential items. Don't push or don't pull into yourself something that you don't need. Sometimes that's a tendency. We always want to pull things towards us. I still have a car. I want a new car because I want a better one. I have a phone that is working, but I want the latest one. I have a 32-inch TV at home, but I want a 55-inch. These are not essentials. So don't ever, don't ever borrow money for non-essentials. Even if you have the opportunity to do it, the bank will give you a credit card for sure if you have, you know, a good salary. This is a temptation. Oh, you read in the papers, it's saying in Villaggio, 50% off. So you go and buy things you don't need. Amen? Amen. To please people you don't like. Yeah, to please people you don't like. <laughs> this is very important. Okay, going to the last point. As I mentioned earlier, you can't spend more than what you earn. And also, money... Sorry. <clears throat> Money must be budgeted or additional money must be added to your budget categories immediately. Say for example, you receive a love gift, you should add it here and not treat, it, treat the, uh, the, the blessing as an opportunity to spend for non-essentials. Do you agree? If you receive your overtime pay, you add it here. And look where you can put it. Rather than, oh, I have 100 now, I spend it now and uh, eat in, uh, in Hardee's, for example. Amen? Amen? Any additional income you have, you put it here. It takes discipline to do that. It takes discipline to do that. Okay, what we have learned so far, planning a budget, and then prioritizing a budget, and then producing a budget. So once we have this budget, number four, we have to persevere, persevering with the budget. Determine to stay within your budget guidelines. So you have to set guidelines. Be disciplined, be prayerful. This determination, discipline, and dependence upon God must be shared by the husband and wife and your children. Okay? You have to explain to them if they are already in the right age. It is very necessary to eliminate 
wasteful spending, or you have to cut on other expenses, or impulsive buying is not an option also. Okay? You have to track your expense. I mean every expense. Track it. And record it. In this chart, there's actual expense. You see? We have the projected cost and the actual cost. But there are not to them. Here. The difference will be your savings. Or, if this is negative, that means you overspend. Okay? Set up a reminder system for paying the bills. So if you have a smartphone, you have to set up reminders that on this day you will pay this, on this day you need to send money in the Philippines, on this day you need this, or you need to, you need to pay this. Very important. And then you need to reevaluate your income and expenses occasionally in order to update your budget. Okay, balance your check account if you have a checking account up to the last penny and compare your actual expenditure with your budget. Actually, when I was growing up, my father would really list all the money and expenses. And I would say, how come my father is so OC? I take it negatively against him. But, you know, studying this, it makes sense. That you really have to track where your money is going. And then never supplement your income with debt. I already mentioned this. Don't borrow to to finance your non-essentials. Dispose of your credit cards, especially if you don't have discipline. Surrender your credit card. It's better not to have a credit card than to be indebted. Okay? A credit card is a handy convenience. However, unless one has the ability and discipline to always pay for credit card purchases in full, this is the premise. You can have your credit card if you can always pay your purchases in full every month. Otherwise, it can be a catastrophe. You will be indebted month in, month out. Okay. E. Be accountable to a trusted friend. It is, it is better if you have a friend that would uh, approve your expenses. Okay? A trusted friend who is not in financial bondage. Don't go to a friend and ask for advice and he is also in financial bondage. He won't be able to give you sound advice. Okay? Seek advice when a financial decision or problem arises. Pastor John is available 24 by 7. You can always call him. That's proven and tested. If you have financial problems or if you're making a decision, you have to consult your spiritual leader. Number five, if you receive a raise, I am guilty of this. If you receive a raise, consider saving it instead of spending it. Okay? Consider saving it rather than spending it. If you are in the process of eliminating your debt, then you pay off the debt using the additional income. In conclusion, creating and maintaining a budget is one of the most rewarding things we can do for our financial sorry, health. I repeat that. Creating and maintaining a budget is one of the most rewarding things we can do for our financial health. It will encourage us to make more money because you can see your state and then it can allow us or it will allow us to spend wisely and then it will alleviate many fears we might have about personal finance. Now, the question is, are we ready to pray, prepare one? Yeah. Are we ready to prepare one? Yeah. And are we ready to persevere, you know, to achieve financial freedom? Yeah. This is actually the question we should ask ourselves. Are we ready to do it? Are we ready to commit ourselves unto the Lord and adhere to the budget that we have, we have uh, uh, prepared? We have to 
give it to the Lord so that the Lord will give us the grace to be able to have that discipline to adhere. It says in our lesson, take control of your money before it takes control of you. I hope you learned something, Pastor. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Brother Jim. Were you blessed? Amen. I'm sure you learned a lot. Uh, if you want a complete copy, uh, this is our lesson number one. Is this supposed to be lesson seven, Brother Jim? Or six? Okay. Uh, yes. So if, we, if you want a complete copy, just let me know. I will make you a copy. Uh, seven seven lessons i can make you a copy or if you can simply give me your email address and email it to you, i'll email it to you or uh, i have been announcing this okay uh, i wrote two books here and i did not okay uh, i just i just write the, the the cover okay we have uh, this is volume one and two of abc's of christian maturity what you just heard the, the these lessons we discuss about financial freedom is here. It's letter F. So this is from A until Z. So 26 lessons. And imagine one lesson, we discuss it for six weeks. We have not even finished. We have lesson number seven for this, and that is financial freedom for the future, which we will discuss in September, the first uh, Friday of September. We are not making any money on this. In fact, I'm losing money on this. I'm doing this so that anyone who wants to learn can learn. Amen. I'm doing the photocopy, and okay, and uh, uh, you just have to get this. I posted in Facebook that this is only 39.97 reals, but it is actually more than that. You can borrow the book yourself and go and make a photocopy and a binding if you want. Okay, you can do that too. But we are providing this book just to make sure that you learn something. Because when you come to church, you, you listen, you learn uh, 30 minutes in Friday school, 30 minutes during the preaching service, and maybe 45 minutes in the afternoon. Uh, that's good enough. But if you are really serious about learning the Bible, you have to have uh, uh, the discipline to study the Bible yourself. And these are great materials for you to be able to uh, study the Bible. For example, level A here is apostasy. Okay. Letter C, B is the bread of Christ. Letter C is about the crucified life. You want to learn about divorce, uh, about those things? It's letter D. Uh, and so this is from A until Z. But before you get this one, you also have to get the, the ABCs of Christian growth. That's the basic. This is uh, deeper than that one. So uh, I just want to help you. When you go back to the Philippines or Africa or wherever, you're from at least you have some material that you can you can use to uh, to be a better Christian amen? amen and so if you want this uh, if you made an order uh, we made you a copy so you can get that after church from sister Cecil again if you want to do the photocopy yourself we will make this available for you also you borrow it go for a photocopy okay if you know somebody who can do it at a cheaper cost you can do that uh, in fact, that will be more convenient for me. I don't have to go through this you know, headache of uh, having it photocopied for everybody. But I'll be willing to do that also uh, if it will help you. Uh, if, it, if it will help you. So today we learned the uh, important things. One is planning a budget, and second is prioritizing a budget. Uh, we discuss about uh, giving to the Lord first. And let me just say this: some people are afraid to give 10% of what they make. Let me say this, if you are a Christian, you can, you can, what do you call this? Uh, you can buy more with the 90% after you have given the tithes than you can with the, 10, with the 100% without giving what belongs to the Lord. Uh, we, have a, we have a promise from the Word of God. So, yung titignan yung binibigay nyo, yung sinasawal nyo sa Panginoon, kasi maliit na bagay lang yan. Ang uh, bigay mo nyo sa Panginoon, Again, the promise is, honor the Lord with thy what? Substance. You know what the Hebrew word for substance? Cash. <laughs> That's a joke. They are not loving. Okay? It simply means honor the Lord with your, your finances. Okay? And with the first fruit of all thine, 
increase your first salary, give it to the Lord. Your first increment, give that to the Lord. And if you do that, he said, uh, so shall thy barns be filled with what? Plenty. Okay? So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presence shall burst out with new wine. That means he will bless you. That's the promise, but there is a premise here to do that first. We want our barns to be filled with plenty, but we do not want to honor the Lord with our substance or with our uh, the first fruit of our increase. And you cannot do that. Okay, so uh, I hope you got something from the Word of God today. Amen. I hope you really learned something. I did. I did. Okay. I really learned a lot. Let's pray and then we will start the service. Spread the bong in here already. I noticed many people are either late today or absent. I don't know. Uh, did the rapture take place? I'm wondering. Okay. Uh, let's pray and then Brother Bong will lead us. Uh, if Brother Bong is not here yet, then Brother Conrad will.